The most destructive lockout in North American sports history cost the National Hockey League the entire 2005 season. In the dispute over player salaries, team owners said that empty arenas were preferable to the status quo. We were willing to lose an entire year, which of the four major league sports nobody's ever done before, and it showed you where we were as a league that that needed to happen. Awful, terrible. I mean, really, there was a lot of dark thoughts, dark days, especially when they canceled the season. It took a year's worth of fiery negotiations before the two sides agreed to a $39 million salary cap. Teams exceeding that figure trigger a hefty payroll tax that's shared by other teams. Twelve months of internal turmoil resulted in financial relief, with two-thirds of NHL teams expected to make money in 2006. I think everybody's happy that there's a season now and it didn't go for two years, so it's done and we got to look forward. It was probably a good cleansing to go through once we decided to, to terminate the season. Players now do what they do best, play hockey. In turn, management sharpens its game plan for the financial future. We needed to make an economic change. We needed to get into it in such a way that we could make every team viable. From a business side of things, it helps us keep our, our costs under wrap. We go in with assuredness of knowing this is what we'll be spending. There's a lot of teams that are still involved in this year's playoff race that may not have been there uh, in years past under the old economic model. San Jose fans have always been loyal to their Sharks, but last year's lockout created a tense situation. Now the Sharks, like the rest of the teams in the league, have to pull out all the stops to fill the 19,000 seat HP Pavilion. When you sell on passion and you sell on, on their excitement for the product and then rip it away from them, there's, that, there's a great uh, thing that bridge that has to be gapped there. There were many fans that said, I'll tell you what, just fix it. And when you come back, make sure it's fixed for good. By taking two steps backwards, it's allowed the NHL to go five steps, five steps forward in a very positive way. While more than 90% of the Sharks fan base returned, their wallets had to be gently massaged. There were minor ticket price reductions, but on the high end, these skyboxes, which cost a quarter of a million dollars per season, are sold out. A healthy Silicon Valley economy is making it easier for the Sharks to recoup the money lost during the lockout. We have a lot of individuals who actually are sweet owners as opposed to simply companies as well, so you know the economy is there. But after being ignored for a year, the fan base was still skeptical. In an effort to re-spark their interest, the NHL created a faster-paced game. Stricter enforcement by game officials opened up the scoring and gives fans more chance to celebrate goals. We are going to call the obstruction. You can't hook like you used to hook. You're going to have to get up and down the ice, and that's going to allow skaters to skate. It's going to allow a lot more power plays. I think it's, um, you know, hockey's on the up and up. And most of the fans I talked to love the new style of game, uh, love how they took out the red line, love the, the penalty shots. Um, love the shootouts and uh, just love the power plays, love all the score that's going on in the NHL right now. Teams used to uh, trap all the big guys, but right now they want to buck moving, uh, hard skating, smooth hockey players, and uh, I think it's because of new rules and, and it will change. The game's more entertaining because the skilled players are awarded for their skill. There's no more mediocrity. The rule changes have helped many players surpass their previous scoring records, and the new salary cap has resulted in better balance around the league. On the ice, the Sharks expect to reach the NHL playoffs and for the first time in nearly a decade, make a net gain on the financial side as well.